In this video, I want to give you an introduction to the GI motility. And how we want to do it is just to walk through all the different segments of the GI tract and figure out what is here the major motility pattern. So what is a GI tract all about? It's about we want to absorb nutrients and expel waste. That's really the job of the GI tract. So how do we do that? Well, we first need to move our food along the GI tract to move it to the small intestine to get all the nutrients out and then to expel the waste. So let's start with the esophagus. So what is the esophagus good for? Well, it's really just good for moving things down to the stomach. So how can you move things forward? Well, if you have a food bolus, which I have shown right here, really to move it forward, what exactly happens in the esophagus is that you need to contract below the food bolus and relax above. Contract, relax, and that's how you move things forward and that's exactly what happens in the esophagus so this GI motility pattern relaxing above and contracting below is called propulsive peristalsis and that's what you see in the esophagus next we're going to talk about the stomach so what happens in the stomach so the stomach has two major functions and therefore we're also going to differentiate the first two parts of the stomach the fundus and the corpus and then the antrum so the fundus and the corpus is really here to store food. We want to eat as much as possible without getting pain, particularly now as we're approaching Thanksgiving. So what happens? We're going to relax. The fundus and corpus is really just relaxing to store as much food as possible. Our ancestors just eat once, ate once, a, once a week or so. So we ate a lot. And then very, very slowly, we're going to move the food forward towards the antrum. So that's really the job of the fundus. Relax to store as much as possible and then very slowly move the food forward. Now the antrum is our master grinder. That's really where the food gets broken up. And how do we break up food? So we have to consider here the circular sphincter here right in the antrum and then the pyloric sphincter. So what do these um, how do this function? So this circular sphincter is going to move very slowly forward and contract. And at the same time, the pyloric sphincter is also contracting rather quickly. So what's going to happen? Well, so you have now all this food here and the one sphincter is moving forward and at the same time the other is going to contract. So what's going to happen is that your food is really moving forward and you make this slosh, slosh, so that means that all this food is going to expel back and that's going to break up your food. So next we're going to talk about the small intestine. What is the major job of the small intestine? Is it to absorb nutrients. So how do we absorb stuff? Well, we want to have it there for a while and really make sure that it's mixing well, that we have a lot of contact of the, all the surface of our bolus so that we get exposure to our um, epithelial cells so that absorption can happen. So how do we mix stuff? So the major mixing movement in terms of GI motility pattern is called segmentation. So how does that work? So let's look at such a bolus. So what's going to happen in the small intestine? So you have contraction at specific points in the small intestine and then you're just going to have a contraction somewhere else as I have shown in the second little figure, and then you go back to the original point. And that's really what, how mixing is happening. It's like li having this little washing machines here, contraction at one point, contraction at a different point, and then going back to the same point. This will really facilitate a good mixing of the contents. But from time to time, occasionally, we need peristalsis. We need to move things forward. So once we have done some mixing, at one point we want to move things forward to get into the collar. So how does this work? This is again peristalsis, as I've already explained before. We're going to contract above the bolus and relax below. Contract above and relax below. 
So next we have the colon. The colon is really here to dry out the bolus and then to expel the waste. So here we also want to have our bolus sitting for a while to be able to really um, absorb all the water. And as you can see, the colon has already for some sort of um, steady contractions all the time that form this hostra. So we have already this little washing machines, a little bit of contractions all the time to really absorb all the water and to dry out the bolus. And then there is some segmental propulsions so the, that you have some sort of um, contractions from time to time uh, similar to this little washing machines that I have described before. You contract, go back, contract at a different spot, but then contract at the same spot that you have hit before. And that leads to really drying out all uh, the, the bolus in the colon. But from time to time, from time to time, we have a contraction, a high amplitude propagating contraction. So we're going to move out the whole content of the colon. We have this from time to time, but actually only once or twice it will really result in the urge to defecate and then really to expel all the waste. This concludes a video on the different motility patterns of the different segments in the GI tract.